Hey there guys, happy Tuesday. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how I made those bangles um, the other day. It's really just painting on these wood um, bangles. Although I think these weren't touted as bangles so much as um, macrame uh, rings, but I use them for bangles. Um, they're a good size. I have big hands and they fit me pretty well. <laughs> um, I like how they fit. They're a little bit smaller. Um, so yeah, but they do fit. And I, like I said, I have really big hands. You guys have seen them a million times. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint them. Um, I have my little, here it is. My little dabber. I forgot to get paper. Hold on one second. Um, typically, I would use my finger, and I will be using my finger, but for some of this part, I am going to use this little, just a sponge dabber thingy. Um, so I'm doing Aztec Gold with um, Ecru and Black for this one. And for the majority, because I, I like, you can do the whole thing in like a speckled situation. Um, I like to do half and half, so half of it will be just a solid color, and I'm gonna do that gold, and then the other half will be um, the speckled part, or it doesn't even need to be half and half. Really, you could. Just do like a little portion like this and then speckle the rest of it, but I'm going to do half and half. So I just dab this all along. Easy, easy. And then make sure you get the inside. Also, I'm going to need more. Just dab it all in there. Just realize you can't see the paint, so just dabbed it on there or blobbed it on there. And on the inside, I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way around with the gold. This is an Aztec gold, so it's not quite as bright as a regular gold gold would be. Okay. I think we are good all the way around. That looks good. So I'm just going to dry this really quickly. pretty good okay so acrylic on the wood dries pretty quickly so it's good stuff all right so next we want to do our other colors that we're going to speckle on the outside of here so I'll just drop some gold which I could have just done on the same spot I don't know why I just did that and black That's way too much. <laughs> Coming out swinging today, guys. And and that's way too much. Oh well. 
Might as well make that too much too. Okay. gold hands. All right, so we're just going to hold the side that we just did, and I guess I'll start with some black and just kind of speckle it around. Like that. And then we'll grab that ecru. You kind of want to get the colors off. It doesn't have to be completely off, but it might be a good idea to just to get them a little bit off. So just whatever look you're going for with these, and then I'm going to do the gold. So that doesn't look too bad, like that. Um, maybe go back and do a little bit of black. Almost looks like um like animal print a little bit. I think I kind of like that. So this is how I'm gonna leave this like that. After having wasted all of that, I will use it for something later. Okay, so I'm gonna dry it this. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so make sure it is dry. It's a little sticky, so I'm gonna let it dry just for a little bit more, and then I'm gonna spray my Krylon on there, the crystal clear. Um, so I'm gonna spray just one coat on this. I'm gonna let this finish drying. Spray one coat of this on there and then let that dry and then I'll be back to show you the rest. So I will be back. Okay, so while that's drying, I am going to go ahead and show you um, the, uh, the little loops and stuff that I make on there. Let me find... So, um, I have just two little onyx beads that I'm going to make for, all right, well, I need something in that, put some of these on there, um, something just to kind of dangle, because I love a dangle.
so we'll just put these on here I don't like that do not like that see so yeah, I have teeny teeny tiny ones Let's see what this does A little wonky too. That's better. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna wrap this up. I'll take that to go. Oops. Just a quick little wrap. Don't want that. I like these. I like these little flush cutters. Don't have to mess with too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't even see. I don't snip it anywhere near the right place. Okay, that's better. Okay, so that will be one of my little dangles. And then I'm just going to use these for the other two. So I just use um, this paintbrush. I have a little notch on here that shows me kind of where the whitest area is. Um, you're going to want to find out how big your piece is. So... I have this handy dandy little uh, digital caliper thing. Um, so I just kind of measure how big this is going to be. It says seven three. Actually, it's a six. Yeah, I'm squeezing it really tightly here. Let's try that again. Six five. That says eight point nine. So I want bigger than that. Um, so I just use. This, this is a 9.5, right around there, 9.5. So obviously you want it bigger so that it'll move around pretty well. So I have my 16 gauge wire. Um, all of this stuff is in my Amazon store, guys. So you can find it all there. And then I'm just gonna find the little notch that I have that I've made for that area. And I'm going to spin this around three times because I want three, three good loops. That's one, two, that should be good. Okay. I'll snip that off. Now this first little part here I don't really like, so I'm going to snip that. And then just as close as you possibly can, if you guys can see, I'm butted up against that end there. Snip that. Do the same thing with the next one. And then the last one. So you have three loops. Now, these cutters typically do a really good job with the ends, but if they don't, you can file them. I have this little set of files. I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm kind of just showing you guys, but I might go back and fix it. Um, but you can file the ends flat. So let's check on our piece here. And this is dry. Like I said, I just did one coat and what you have to do is when you're spraying it, lay it flat Make sure you get all the way around the edge, but also make sure that it's getting on the inside here as well. And then wait till that dries, flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So, um, we're just gonna put these on like regular jump rings. So you have to open them up pretty wide. Put your little, whatever you're putting on there on there and then put it around.
and then make it meet. This one isn't wanting to meet. Oops. Okay. So I'm going to go back and file those because they're not meeting up too great. Um, and then make sure that your charms, there we go, are on the outside also. So I do my, I stagger mine. So I have a disc, a bead, a disc. But they do flip around as you're wearing them and stuff. So it might not actually stay that way. But for the sake of photos, that's how I do it. these on like you would any other jump ring. And you don't have to add these. You can keep the bangle just as you like. I just like danglies. So that's why I do danglies. Kind of nuzzle them next to each other. This one's not as bad as the other one. That one is good. And then the last one. That one could probably use a little filing also. Let's put this on. I'm going to turn that one around. There are two sides to this. This one's like the flat back side and this one's the nice curved pretty side. Golly. You know why? It's because I don't have my light. And I know I complain about that every time. But my light is a magnifier and I love it. And it helps me see. go. All right, I am going to go back and file those two so that they are nice and get these flipped around. Sometimes you have it a little bit too tight. This one's kind of high. There we go. So there we go. That's how that looks. There's your little bangle bracelet with your little charms. Everything is in my Amazon shop, which you can find on my link tree, which will be in the description. Join my Happy Place Facebook group. We have fun over there. Everybody's so nice and kind and wonderful. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's easy, but it's really cute and simple to do. Have a great day. You'll see me later in the week. Bye.